all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so i have a slight injury in my eye and because of that i am not coming on screen so hopefully it will be <laughs> resolved soon and we'll go from there so in the meantime here is a discussion that i want to do with you the uh, there is a fascinating study that just came out although the disease the severe covid is an old thing we know it but today you would hear about a study that shows another mechanism of long uh, severe covid and this may be now this part is what i am saying and this may be wrong uh, authors did not research on this angle and so here is my editorial this may also be the cause of clotting in long covid so let's look at very quickly the references this is the study generation of potentially inhibitory auto antibodies to adam ts13 in coronavirus disease 2019 we'll talk about this there are some references that are also in the description of this video and uh, you are aware that we have drbean.com uh, that has a lot of lectures 3d anatomy various kinds of uh, uh, physiology physiology lectures pathology clinical medicine etc nowadays dr tom king is working on dermatology and by the way dr tom king on 12th august is going to talk about cancer skin cancer and related lesions he that will be a, a, a webinar on 12th august he's a dermatologist in uk and if you would like to sign up let me know we are creating a page to have people sign up for that um, webinar so dr tom king is working on this dr faraz bhatti is working on emergency medicine he actually just finished emergency medicine and now is producing cardiovascular related lectures i am working on microbiology and you may have seen the latest ones that are beautifully rendered in addition to that of course there are tons of other lectures as well in the description of this video there is a link to a very reasonable price for dr bean dot coms access so take advantage of that and now once again here are the links we are going to now start looking at the study this study this study with my drawings So this is a study it came out it came out <laughs> came out published online 2023 June 28 so pretty recent study To understand this study oh, oh, let me actually give you a review or summary of the study first what the researchers said in this study is that the clotting that occurs in severe covid could be and they actually demonstrate that in the study that what they're saying is actually possible it could be because the von willebrand factor is not checked correctly by adam ts13 protein so in simple language what that means is that the autoimmune reaction produced in our body as a result of the covid infection causes the von willebrand factor which is a protein glycoprotein that is made up of glucose and protein which increases the propensity of clotting or helps in clotting the von willebrand factor increases in amount that causes clotting and embolism and that causes then the severe disease i think that the clotting issue in long covid 
could also be because of the same mechanism. And this is the first ever study to demonstrate this mechanism and the results of that. So let's look at it. To understand this study, we have to understand these uh, medical concepts. So here in front of us, this is an endothelium that the, these cells. Endothelium are the cells of the inner surface of a blood vessel. So this is a blood vessel and these are the endothelial cells. Then within the blood vessel, there are, of course, blood. there is blood within the blood vessel and blood has plasmas and electrolytes and nutrients and blood cells and so on, proteins. However, we are concerned with a few things here. Number one, if you see here, these little plates and bags like things are platelets. So we are concerned with platelets here because the platelets will aggregate together to make a clot. Then this little dragon-like thing with a lot of eights on its back, this is von Willebrand factor. And I would explain that why does it have this little uh, receptacle on it, why does it have this hook, and why does it have various kinds of hands on it, and what do these eights mean. But for the time being, von Willebrand factor. Then here, if you see, this blood vessel is injured. So because of the injury to the blood vessel, the underlying collagen fibers have become exposed, just like when a building falls, the iron that was used to stabilize the building pops out and is dangling in various locations of the broken building. So that is the collagen that you are seeing here. Now, one more thing I want to say before I move on. Do you see these blue little tiny dots in the endothelial cells? These are representing the Vibel Plaid bodies or Vibel Plade bodies, whichever way is the pronunciation, these are tiny um, pockets that contain these dragons in them, von Willebrand factors. Of course, over here, the von Willebrand molecule are made so big, but these are really tiny microscopic molecules which are present within the Vibel Plade bodies within the endothelium. These von Willebrand factors are also present in the platelets. Inside the platelet, there is a tiny pocket as well, or a vesicle as well, which is called alpha granule. And that alpha granule contains many mo uh, chemical molecules and substances and von Willebrand factor in them as well. Plus, the von Willebrand factor is also found in the subendothelial space that is below uh, or outside of the endothelial wall, outside of the inner surface of the blood vessel then von Willebrand factor is actually found floating around in the blood as well. So there are many locations where von Willebrand factor is present. You can be sure that if anything happens to the blood vessel, there will be von Willebrand factor nearby to start the clotting process to help close the blood vessel. Now also remember, it's not necessary that the blood vessel has to have a breach in it, it has to have a break in it. Von Willebrand factor can actually be released by endothelium even in an intact blood vessel, which the, the intact blood vessel, which is under stress of inflammation, reactive oxygen species, uh, viral infections, toxins that are running around in the blood and so on. So any insert to the endothelial cells of the uh, blood vessels could in turn release von Willebrand factor without any breach to the blood vessel and this would cause an intrinsic clotting process. Okay, continuing. So talking a little bit about the von Willebrand factor, normally when it is present in the serum plasma running around, it is in a circular or globular structure. It's in a rounded structure. However, when it becomes active, it becomes elongated, like a long thread. Now let's look at the different parts of this. Von Willebrand factor is actually a binding factor. It is a glue that can glue with, that can bind with various kind of products within the tissues. For example, this hand over here, I made it to represent that it can bind with active platelets. It can actually bind with inactive platelets and then activate them. This hand over here, 
is depicting with this gesture that it can bind with collagen, which are cylindrical uh, fibrils. Then this little hook here, the red hook, tells that this von Willebrand factor can connect with other von Willebrand factors and it would of course connect with them on this receptacle here and this way many von Willebrand molecules come together and make a big cluster of molecules that is kind of the basis of clotting we have many von Willebrands aggregating together and making multimers multimers mean many and then the most important thing, these eight looking structures that are present on it. These are molecules, these are clotting factor eight. Von Willebrand factor binds with the clotting factor eight and stabilizes them. In the presence, when the clotting factor eight is bound to von Willebrand factor, then the life of the, the uh, clotting factor eight is about eight hours to 10 hours. On the other hand, when it is separated from the von Willebrand factor, for example, when the clotting factor 8 is needed for clotting, then its life is only two hours. So we say that von Willebrand factor provides a ride to factor 8 plus it stabilizes it. So these are some of the bindings that are at least important for us in our discussion today for this study. Continuing, next concept these are platelets. So platelets are actually made in the bone marrow. There is a cell called megakaryocyte, big cell, and that cell pinches off tiny plate-like structures. And those structures are called platelets, small plates. And platelets, just like red blood cells, do not have a nucleus in them because they are just, the platelets are just the little pinched off pieces of a bigger cell. Inside the platelets though, the bigger cell, the, the parent cell, has given them currency to go and spend and do their function. So platelets have granules in which there are various kind of molecules present. And as I said before, there are alpha granules present in the platelet that have von Willebrand factor and many other things. When platelets become active, they become rough in their surface they become spiky, they have tiny spikes coming out, which will then tangle with each other because an active platelet's role is to start making or participating in clot formation. Platelets are the bricks of the clot. So they become rough so that they can tangle with each other and they get stuck with each other. And then we would have fibrin that would be wrapped around that clot. So von Willebrand factor would also bind with them so von Willebrand factor, platelets, fibrin, and many other things will make a clot. Now here, if you see, this part of the blood vessel was injured, or this could be an injury to the blood vessel through the inflammation, let's say the spike protein causing the inflammation. Whatever is the reason, it could be endothelium releasing von Willebrand factor, or it is the von Willebrand factor present in the in the blood that is coming in contact with collagen here if you see and that is becoming active once the von Willebrand factor becomes active it starts binding with the platelets as I said before and once it binds with the platelets it activates them and so now those little cute innocent plate looking cells have become all monstrous tangly messes which would now start becoming clot so here if you see, these are activated platelets and if you see here, these uh, von Willebrand factors have now started tangling with each other and there is a whole multimer, a big pile of von Willebrand factors. It's 5 o'clock on Friday. Celebrate the start of the weekend with your Alexa routine. Hope you have a good one. So here is a new character that you're seeing. This character, this protein, is Adam ST13. It is a cleaving protein. Cleaving protein means a protein that would cleave, that would cut. The Adam ST13, what it does is that it causes the von Willebrand factors to be cleaved. It causes them to be cut down. 
And so it converts those multimers back into monomers, and then those monomers of one Willebrand factor are further broken down by proteases. Proteases mean protein-breaking enzymes. What is the point of this? The point is that this Adam protein, or glycoprotein as well, this enzyme would control the clot size. So if the clot is forming, Adam would continue to cut that clot down and make sure that the clot does not become too big. Or when we do not need the clot, it is going to dissolve it. Or when the clot is made unnecessarily, it's going to break it down. So now if you see here, sometimes our bodies start making antibodies that attack the Adam TS30. So here you are seeing that various antibodies have come and they are attacking the Adam TS13. So of course these antibody will be called anti-Adam TS13 antibodies. Now this could be a normal autoimmune disease as well. However, the researchers were thinking may, that maybe in severe COVID patients, an autoimmune component of immune dysregulation may be the production of these antibodies against Adam TS13. So they thought, why not we check it out? So here is, so before we go there, do you see that in this diagram, you see a lot of uh, multimers for van Willebrand factor. You see a lot of platelet aggregation and activation as well. Why? Because there is no Adam TS13 or less Adam TS13. Why? Because Adam TS13 is being beaten up, being bound by the antibodies against it. This is the problem. When there is less Adam TS13, then the, the Adam TS13 is not controlling the thrombus side size by breaking down the multimers of von Willebrand factor. When that does not happen, there is a continuous piling up of the von Willebrand factor, which also is activating the platelet. So there is a continuous formation of the thrombus and that thrombus, it, if it breaks down, it will become an embolus and go down the stream and get stuck in some other smaller blood vessel. Or this would cause blood flow dysregulation right here and the downstream tissue will have nutrition problems, oxygen supply issues, and so on. So now let's look at the study. The study says that they took blood samples from November, April, from April to November 2020. There were 156 people that were part of the study. There were 90 patients of mild to moderate COVID mild to severe COVID. There were 30 healthy individuals and then there were another 36 ICU bound patients who were not in the ICU because of the one, uh, because of the severe COVID. The point they were trying to do was they were trying to see if the COVID, severe COVID patients and uh, and less severe COVID patients have von Willebrand factor increase and Adam TS13 reduced and they have the antibodies against Adam, anti Adam TS13 antibodies. So, but they also wanted to make sure that this is not just a flu, cannot, and maybe that everybody who is in ICU has these antibodies developed. So they're thinking that these are in the uh, severe COVID patients, but turns out these are in all critically ill patients. So that is why they included other critically ill patients who were not ill because of COVID. Then they thought that maybe healthy individuals may have these as well, just as part of the, our phenotypes. Some may have it and others don't, and maybe there is they just found them in the critically ill patients and thought this was because of COVID. So to rule that out, they also had healthy individuals. So now these are all the controls and this is the design of the study. What they found was that the anti Adam TS13 antibodies were present in healthy individuals, sure. That was 6.7% of the healthy individuals had anti-Adam TS13 antibodies. They also found that 5.6% of critically ill patients present in the 
ICU had these antibodies, which is very similar to healthy individuals. That means it is possible that we all, 5 to 6% of us, just have Adam, anti Adam TS13 antibodies, and just that's that. On the other hand, they noticed that the severe or critically ill COVID patients had 55.9 of them, percent of them, almost 56 percent of them had anti Adam TS13 antibodies. So, and this is statistically significant as well. The p value is 0 0.001. So, they were able to confirm with statistical significance that in severe COVID patients, anti Adam TS13 antibodies were present. That means if you can now repeat that. Um, mechanism with me once those so COVID came in maybe it is COVID spike or some other part of COVID I think it would be spike and that causes the production of anti-TS13 antibodies it, it could be some other immune mechanism I'm just gesturing here they they simply said that we saw the antibodies to be there they didn't say why these were there so COVID came in anti-TS13 um, anti Adam TS13 antibody were produced. They attacked the Adam TS13, which in turn became less in amount, which caused the von Willebrand factor to go unchecked and the and the multimers started piling up in the blood vessels, which in turn caused the platelet aggregates to start developing, which means the uh, the whole clotting intravascular clotting started occurring and that then led to other issues that we see in the severe patients. I believe, so this is my editorial here, I may be completely wrong, I believe that in long COVID patients, especially of, of the clotting or blood disorders, may have this association as well. And so then, Generation of anti Adam antibodies was associated with, and this is from the study itself, lower Adam TS13 activity. So, of course, when the antibodies are present, they are going to attack the protein against which they are made, and of course, then there will be less of that protein and there will be less of the action of that protein. So, there were lower Adam TS13 activity, and 56.5% interquartile range was 21 to 71.5 and so on and the p-value is significant so that is one and of course as I just said probably three or four times and you may be getting sick of it but when this Adam TS13 is not working correctly then the von Willebrand multimers will keep aggregating which would also cause platelet aggregations which would then make big thrombi and those thrombi should have been resolved and now they're not going to be resolved because the Adam is less then they also found that there was increased disease severity. So severe or critical in 90% versus 62.3% and the p-value 0.019. So that is also statistical significant, statistically significant that not only the antibodies were present and ADMTS13 activity was less, but the severity was greater as well in association with these this, the Adam TS13 less. And finally, it was not statistical significant number, but the trend toward mortality was higher in the patients that had lesser Adam TS13 activity. So that was 35.5% versus 18.6% mortality, but the p value is not significant. So there was a trend. And finally, here is the abstract in which the same discussion that I just did, they have it. But if you see the last few lines, they say, the present study demonstrates for the first time that generation of Adam TS13 antibodies is frequent in COVID-19 associated with lower Adam TS13 activity and increased risk of an adverse disease course. These findings provide a rationale to include Adam TS13 antibodies in the diagnostic workup of SARS-CoV-2 infection. And if you read the rest of their study, you would actually find out that they also say, they also say 
that so if I go here for a second they also say that the plasma exchange may be so if I go here here what are the therapeutic consequences of the study plasma exchange constitutes a therapeutic option which would be able to reduce both the excessive von Willebrand factor and the antibodies to Adam TS13. So because there are those big monomers that are present, these will be removed with the plasma exchange and there are anti uh, Adam TS13 antibodies present in this patient's blood and these will be removed as well and the newer plasma that will come in will bring in Adam TS13 and that would help uh, restored some balance. That means that plasma exchange is not only necessary for the other reasons, therapeutic reasons of the antibodies and, and like, but instead it can be beyond that. So our findings provide a rationale beyond the elimination of cytokines to suggest plasma exchange as a therapeutic strategy in COVID-19. So this is the discussion for today. I feel that this might be a mechanism also involved in long COVID in some patients, not involved but associated with long COVID in some patients who may have clotting disregularities and that may be because of the anti adam TS13 antibodies. That means it will be interesting to have these antibodies as part of the diagnostic workup for long COVID and for patients who are going through COVID, especially the ones who are at risk of severe disease. So with this, thank you very much and I would see you again. Have a nice weekend.